There's several of us speaking today. There'll be myself, followed by Liam, then there's going to be Reese, and then there's going to be Victor. And what I'm going to focus on mostly is just the history of Yard Dogs, because we are a young company at the end of the day. It was eight years ago that Liam and I um, had a quick phone call because we finished our first university and we needed to make some money, quite frankly. Like, got that tuition bill and said, oh shit, let's, we got to do something about this. So I, I knew about this company called Canadian Property Stars where I went to one of their presentations and like, yep, yeah, we'll give you this thing called an aerator and you go door to door. I'm like, okay. What does aeration do? I don't care. People pay about 50 bucks for it, so I'll figure that out. Um, but hey, if I'm doing all of the sales, I'm doing all the marketing, and I'm doing all the work, I kind of want 100% commission. Like 30% for that, I, let's, let's figure something out. So I give Liam a call, and we start chatting about this aeration machine. He's like, oh yeah, I don't know what this thing does, but you know, it's about three grand. We'll just go door to door, and we'll, well, are you in? Liam's like, yeah, I'm in. So we, we, we buy this machine, we start going to door to door, and we were so bad. We were so bad at sales. Like, we didn't know what to say. We stuttered all the time, but we were willing to mess up a little bit to figure it out. And lo and behold, people started to notice a couple things about us. Like, okay, these, these kids, like, you know, they, they actually show up when they said they were going to show up. They, are, they don't have Coca-Cola stains all over their clothes. They don't swear every third word. There's no cigarette hanging out of their mouth while they're going. They like this clean impression and sort of a dirty industry. And we call this industry since then the dirt life. And a cool thing about the dirt life is that once you're in, I promise you, you're never going to really leave. It's always going to be a part of your blood going forward. Liam's wife's trying to become a teacher, but every now and then she ends up back at the office. It's just the way it goes, quite frankly, here. So to kick things off, guys, we have this uh, about a 15-minute video that really goes into our history uh, better than I can verbalize it right here. Uh, we'll start with that, and then we'll get rocking right into the presentations. How far should we be going back with all of this? Really excited to share some big news today. We're going to be talking about what's the plan for this season, what's the plan for the future of Yard Dogs, and where each and every one of you fits in to that large puzzle, essentially. So I got to start by telling you guys about my haircut on Tuesday night. I knew this presentation was coming up. I got to go get a haircut and stuff. Victor and Liam think I got more of a buzz cut, but I, I, I like it. I, I don't know what you guys think there. So um, it was about 8 o'clock. I got my kids to bed. And um, so just like people take out their phone to do you know, lawn care Calgary when they need it, I took out my phone and did haircut Calgary. And, oh, yeah, that one's closed. That one's closed. Oh, Tommy Guns, Mark them all. They're open. I'm rolling in. So I get there. The, the lady's name is June. She's cutting my hair. And you know how the haircuts go. The start is always just very like, oh, yeah, how's your day going? You know, all that stuff. And then the more personal questions come up. It's like, so uh, what do you do? And when people ask me what I do, I've always like, had a hard time with that answer because I, I honestly don't really know. Um, and, and lawn care is sort of an interesting, uh, you get very interesting reactions from it. You guys will get the same reactions as me. When you say you're in lawn care, you either have people saying, oh, wow, that's awesome, or people saying, oh, are you sure the margins are okay? You sure, are you sure you're going to make it and stuff? And I've heard it all, all the whole spectrum. Sometimes I go off the, you know, the technical answer, oh, yeah, I do um, fertilization treatments and herbicide applications. Or sometimes I just go, yeah, I just make grass green. But this time I was going to go in between, and I just told her, listen, I own a, I own a lawn care company. And then, this was, this was on Tuesday night, we're getting 25 centimeters of snow uh, this, uh, a couple days ago, and she says, oh, uh, you must not be very busy. And I were thinking to myself, no, we're not very busy. We're fucking insanely busy. <laughs> that, November, we're doing prepay sales. December, we're, getting, we're giving out trips to Mexico to our clients to get people to book again. We're getting in a Red Deer office. We're getting in an Edmonton office. We're getting our branch managers for those places. We're getting you guys. We're filling the right people in the right seats and keeping the wrong people out of the company, which takes a ton of work. It's been absolutely nuts. And, but to someone else, it's just lawn care. So I wanted to ask myself, like, hey, how do you communicate what lawn care actually is? And I think to do that, we got to go back a step and ask yourself, what exactly is a lawn to people? Is it just grass? Is it just the green stuff in front of someone's house? Or is it more than that? Could a lawn actually be more like a place where people like to spend time with their family? Is it where we go have a picnic and break bread together? Is it where we go on adventures and explore the world? Is it where we capture those family portraits together? Is a lawn more of like where we go to pray? Is it perhaps somewhere where we like to have a drink or in Reese's case, maybe have eight? And is it somewhere that we like to go, you know, fall asleep, maybe one day we'll fall in love on the lawn? It's different to everybody, but what matters is how we communicate that. So to figure out how we communicate that, I had to ask myself, what do our yard dog clients all have in common? Do they live in a certain type of house? Do they live in, uh, do they have a certain type of income? Do they have a certain marital status? But at the end of the day, none of those really matter. 
What matters is that Yard Dog's clients truly care about their lawn. That's why it's lawn care. We go there and we put pride and professionalism into a part of their house. Because when someone has a green grass, Danny lines, it's hard to describe, but honestly, they're just happy. And that's why we're gonna make our mission at this company, making the happiest clients on planet Earth. Because they didn't take out their phone and write down lawn mowing Calgary. They didn't do window washing Calgary, spring cleanup Calgary, toilet scrubbing Calgary, you know, dog shit picking up in Calgary. They did lawn care Calgary. And they picked us. They picked yard dogs. What a, what a fucking privilege. Like, how dare we not give them what they asked for and do a hell of a job on that. And make sure that person, when we're there, feels like, okay, this company, they treat me like gold. Like, they know me by name. They make my lawn look perfect. When they mess up, they own up to it. When, they, when there's a problem, they communicate it. They take care of me. They care about my lawn, because then they care about me. And that's what this whole presentation today, all of us speaking, we're gonna focus on. It's about the client. It's about the experience, because it's true. It is sort of just grass, but it's actually a lot more to the person that. It's their property. You know, most people's number one asset in their lives is their home. That's where they've put all of their savings into for the most part. So when we go onto their property, they've given us an opportunity, a privilege to help them care for it. And that's powerful. And that's why we need to do everything we can to deliver on that promise. We gotta ask ourselves though, does Calgary need another lawn care company? And the short answer to that is honestly no. There's some other, those are our biggest competitors there's guys. Green, in order, probably Green Drop's the biggest, then Weed Man, then Neutralon, Dr. Green, then there's us. I'd say we're probably the smallest right now out of the five. So what can we do to be differently? Because quite frankly, they all do a good job. They give you a green, weed-free lawn. But how can we be different? How can we really stand out from the crowd? And if we're going to be Alberta's number one law care and company, how are we actually going to make that happen? So I really do have a strong theory that it's up to three things, essentially. One, the professionalism that we bring to the job followed by the personal touch that we put into every interaction, and then really honing in on our competitive difference. First and foremost, professionalism back then in the industry, like I said, is coffee stains all over the shirt, people weren't showing up, people drive beaters everywhere, and people are just not giving people an awesome client experience. Remember, making the grass green and weed free, that's the minimum standard. Like, they hire us to do that. If we don't do that, that's fraud. That's exactly what we have to do. But what we do outside of that, the way we talk to them on the phone, the way that we pick up their toys, if there's some toys there, and put them to the side nicely, no, don't just work around it. The way we treat them, you know, we were driving beat up decals, we had no decals, we had, or we had no phone numbers and stuff, <laughs> driving the red van um, that had no mufflers, <laughs> it was so loud as we drove by. That was then, but this is now. 2022 F-150 XLTs, most companies guys didn't get their fleet this year. COVID's really messed up the supply chain, but we put in that order in September the second the job bank, or the order bank opened, and we secure these trucks. Put a motherfucking dog on top of it. No one does that. Like, like we saw that green drop drop. Have you guys seen that drop before? We thought it was pretty cool, but we're yard dogs. What can we do? We spent four months building these dogs, and these things are. I've been driving them around, guys. You're gonna get heads turning and stuff when you're on the highway. About seventy percent of people look at you, and it's either you see their teeth smiling or they go. <laughs> like, because they have no idea what the heck they're looking at. And when you're in the smaller communities driving around, I live in Silver Springs, I was driving around, and oh my gosh, people love it. People love the dogs. We're going to get a ton of attraction, attention from these things. Professional guys, clean uniforms every single day. We knock on the door before and after the job and let the people know what we're going to be doing that day and answer any questions that they might have. It's not about getting like flying through 50, 60 jobs a day. It's about having a good workload of jobs for sure, but never taking away from that client experience at the door. We wave at people as they walk by. You know, if a family's walking by with their dog, we don't just keep spraying. We stop and say, hi, how's it going, guys? Yeah, have a nice day. And then you continue with your work. Those small things mean a lot to people and show at the end of the day that we care about our lawn care industry, essentially. So our personal touch back in the day, guys, honestly, was probably the fact that I was on the phone. People got used to this James fellow. We only had like, you know, 100 clients. So it was like, James, when are you going to come spray my lawn? James, can I get a discount? James, when will you guys be here? And it was, it was getting ridiculous. But when Victor and Cassie came in, we started to you know, wean James off the phone. And I wanted to never be dependent on the company. I don't want people to come to Yard Dogs because of Liam, because of James, because of Victor. I want them to come to Yard Dogs because it doesn't matter who they get from Yard Dogs. If that person has a Yard Dogs badge on, they're going to do a damn good job. If you, someone answers the phone with Yard Dogs, it is going to be clean, it is going to be professional, and we're going to take care of you at the end of the day. 
So we have a fun, engaging brand. We say hi to people, and we have dedicated technician routes. You technicians, you're going to be taking care of the same, th the, of the same three, four, five hundred people. You're going to get to know them by name. They're going to get to know you by name. You're going to understand the special needs of their property. Our customer service reps, it's, it, reps, when people call in, it's not going to be going through this huge directory. It's going to be like, thank you for calling Yard Dogs. My name is Jack. How can I help you out today? We're going to be giving a personal attention to the people, and we're going to be calling them by name as they call in because our phone software allows us to do that. Back in the day, our competitive advantage, honestly, was that Liam and I didn't know how to give up. We just kept going and going and going. Even though trucks were getting towed away, I had my AMA membership and I used every single tow every single year. <laughs> we had air raiders falling off our truck on Stony Trail. It was a disaster. We had some bad things happening there. Thank God no one ever got hurt with us, but we didn't know how to give up. Like that's Liam putting up a sign that says lawn mowing in my cell phone. <laughs> that, was that, that was our marketing back then, guys and we just didn't know how to give up. But this year, what is our true competitive advantage? If we're gonna stand out from a green drop, neutral on Wee Man and Dr. Green, how is Yard Dogs gonna be different? Is our unique trucks, the fact that we have a dog on top of this 2022 F-150, maybe it's our brand. We have, you know, we're the Yard Dogs, we have the Pomeranian, the Great Dane, the St. Bernard package. Is that what it's gonna be? Well, maybe it's gonna be our sales efforts. Like Victor, Amy, and Arden treat every sale like they're selling a $2 million mutual fund. But in reality, it's a golden retriever package, but we go hard at the dirt every single time. Is it the fact that we have brand new equipment for not only our technicians, but also our office staff, brand new computers that work every single time, coffee, gator in the fridge, always ready to go. Is it the fact that if you do Lawn Care Calgary, we're the number one company that pops up. Lawn Care Red Deer, same thing. Lawn Care Edmonton, we're almost there, about four away. Is it the fact that statistically, our Google Ads outrank all of our competitors every single time, for the most part, statistically is the fact that we have over 450 reviews and a 4.9 out of five. Edmonton and Red Deer will each have over 100 this year. Is that what it is? Maybe it's the fact that we have a great fertilizer program. We actually do very good work when it comes to making grass green and weed free. Is it the fact that we're transparency with our subscribe and save renewals? Is it our prices? We do all these things, guys, but I don't think this is our competitive advantage. At the end of the day, the number one thing that's gonna make us different than Weed Man, Green Drop, Neutralon, it's not our prices, it's not our trucks, it's not the way we do the lawns, it is you. You are a competitive advantage. You, no one other company in the whole world has these people in this room right now. And you guys are Yard Dogs. Yard Dogs puts the customer first every single time. I know we're so special because we have Amy, we have Amanda, we have Gabe, we have Josh, we have Kevin, we have Matt. We have a team that is going to do whatever it takes to get the job done, and we're going to do it and do it and do it until that job gets done every time and always make the clients happy no matter what. Because one day, guys, we do want to be here. We want to be Alberta's number one lawn care company within five years, but from there, why not be Canada's number one? Why not be North America's number one lawn care company? And in order to make this happen, we need to make this happen. It starts on the lawn that we are currently at. The way we say hello, the way we communicate our services, the way we answer their questions, and the way we make that lawn beautiful and weed free. So I'm so pumped up for the season. I'm so excited to deliver a, an experience for our customers unlike anyone has ever seen. And we chose you guys all by name here. We had a ton of applicants this year. Protect, Matt spent an entire month picking our technicians. He went through a ton of interviews and he chose each and every one of you by name. For our customer service guys, we had over 300 applicants, and Reese picked you three. He really did. There was a ton of people he had to go through. Kevin, Josh, our branch managers for Red Deer and Edmonton, raise your hand, guys. Hey, welcome to the first year, guys. Look at those branches. I, I went through hundreds of people to find those two, and I liked it because those guys had a fire in their belly and stars in their eyes, and they're going to make this happen. There's no promises. These branches might not work, but these guys are going in and says, I'm your guy, I'm your guy, and we're gonna make it work. We're gonna have, a, we're gonna grow like crazy in those areas. Sales, Victor had so many people, and Victor was convinced I can't find anyone better than me, and I don't think that's true. Arden and Amy are gonna kick Victor's ass this year <laughs> in sales, get that happening in there. I already did. <laughs> and Liam, he's built a marketing team with Jordan and Claire, and they're coming together, and we're going to make Yard Dogs the number one choice for everyone for lawn care this year. If they go to Google asking any question, when's the best time to aer aerate my lawn, it's Yard Dogs that gives them the answer. And we build trust every single step of the way. 
We have worked damn hard to put the right person in the right seat, and we will defend this culture at all costs. If there's not the right person in this company, Liam and I will take care of it. We'll make sure that you guys are protected and you guys have your job and ready to go every single season. Thank you very much. That's all I got for you.